Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you for our Bible study tonight. We thank you for your spirit with us. And we thank you for the expectation we have that you are going to teach each of us, even individually in our heart, in our spirit, in Jesus' name. And we pray as a result of what we learn today, you will grant every one of us victory in our souls, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, we pray. We welcome every one of you to the Bible study tonight, in Jesus' name. We are in the epistle general of James, and we're still in chapter 1. Last week, we looked at verses 13 to 18. But there's so much in those verses that we need to go over again from verse 13 to verse 16. Because today we want to take a practical approach to these verses. And I pray that what we learn today will be beneficial to every one of us in Jesus' name. Please open your Bible as we read together James chapter 1, verse 13 to verse 16. Let no man say, when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. But God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust has conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. That last verse, verse 16, do not err, it says, do not be mistaken, do not be drawn away, do not be led astray, do not become ensnared, do not be ignorant, my beloved brethren. It's calling us to a life of victory. It's telling us that as we look at the subject of temptation, we should so learn of the grace of God, of the truth of Scripture, that we will not be led astray. We'll be able to stand firm in our conviction and we'll be victorious. We need to understand that there is no place, no company, no age, no person. is temptation free. So we need to learn God's word and be possessed with the grace of God and the mind of Christ so that we can live a victorious life. Temptation really is like a fearful world. What do we say it's a fearful word? Because really it is Satan's temptation or Satan's bait to entice us or to draw us away into sin and so make us disobedient against our God. One temptation can lead into another and therefore can be the beginning of a possible series of infinite evils. That is, once one temptation begins and somebody yields to it, then that can go on and on and on. Because now the devil would have found a crack in the spiritual wall of our lives. And then through that, he'll be able to do much havoc. Somebody said that temptation is like the ringing of an alarm bell, whose melancholy sounds may reverberate through eternity. Therefore, it's better to shun that bait of the devil at the beginning, so that you do not get into a struggle that will later ensnare your life. We have the word of wisdom given us in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 3. Proverbs Chapter 22, verse 3. A prudent man foreseeth evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. That tells us that if you are a real child of God, prudent, wise, knowledgeable in the way of the Lord, you foresee the evil in the temptation. And as you see that that's the temptation, you hide yourself, you take a cover, a refuge under the name and the strength of the Lord. And then that evil will pass over you. But if you are simple hearted, if you are ignorant, if you do not do the right thing and you pass on, you may discover that you come into a snare. In Proverbs chapter 6, we are applying the words there. 
to what we're studying now. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 2. Thou art snared with the words of thy mouth. Thou art taken with the words of thy mouth. It's like somebody gets into a net. It's like somebody gets into a trap when you get into temptation. Therefore, the very best thing to do is to make sure that you will not allow yourself to remain in such a snare, such a trap, such a net. Verse 4. Give not sleep to thine eyes, nor slumber to thy eyelids. Deliver thyself as a roe from the hand of the hunter, and as a bird uh, from the hand of the fowler. I told you last week that as we uh, look at James chapter 1 and in verse 14, that the word drawn away, or the word enticed, that they are hunting and fishing words. It's like the devil, the hunter, wanting to bring the Christian into his net, into his trap. That's why we have read now in Proverbs chapter 6 verse 5, you will deliver yourself as an animal from the hand of the hunter. Now there are some people that will pray against temptation. And yet they become so foolish that they rush into tempting situations. That's like thrusting your hands or your fingers into the fire and then praying that you will not be burnt. Somebody said it this way. He who has no might to trade with the devil shall be so wise as to keep away from his shop. If you don't have anything to buy in the devil's shop, if you do not want to trade with the devil, why are you visiting the place of temptation? No one can honestly and hopefully and uh, hopefully uh, to be delivered from temptation unless he himself honestly, firmly determines to do the best he can to be out of the temptation. And we need to understand that temptation often comes not at our strongest point, but at our weakest moments. And uh, when we are at the limit of our perseverance, at the limit of our patience, at the limit of our self-control, at the limit of our prayerfulness and love, and you are even confessing and saying to yourself, I'm getting tired, I'm getting tired, that's the time to watch out, because then the temptation can come to become unchristian. So, beware. We're looking at uh, three parts as we look at the study today. Number one is a crisis of temptation. Temptation comes and it's like a crisis. The crisis of temptation. Number two, the causes of temptation. There are some things we can identify that cause temptation. And if we identify them and we avoid them, then we'll be victorious. Then point number three is conquering the tempter. My prayer is that the Lord will make us conquerors. In number one, the crisis of temptation. A crisis of temptation. James chapter 1 verse 13 and the first part of verse 14. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. But every man is tempted. Now you see the passage we have read is telling us of the certainty that temptation will definitely come. We're grateful to God that temptation does not come every minute of every hour of every day of our lives. But it does come. And when it comes, you need to understand the direction or the source from which it is coming. You can settle it in your mind that it is not coming from God. Because we're told in verse 13, let no man say, whether the man is a sinner or a saint, a Christian or an unbeliever, let no one say when he's tempted that he's being tempted of God. Why? We've learned about that last week. God is holy. There is nothing in his nature that will make him to want him to tempt any man. He cannot be tempted with evil, so he himself does not tempt any man. And yet the fact remains in the first part of verse 14. Every man is tempted. Every man is tempted from the first Adam to the second Adam and to the offsprings of Adam, and to the followers of Christ, the second Adam, everyone is tempted. Adam himself was tempted. 
And Jesus Christ was tempted. And uh, because of that, those who are the offsprings of Adam, that is, those who are in this world by creation, following Adam, they too, they will be tempted. And those who are the redeemed of the Lord, following Christ, because Christ, the captain of our salvation, is tempted, so we believers too will be tempted. Think about this. That Christ, even though he had the power, he had the grace, he had the authority, and he had the conquering spirit within him, he could not fall. And yet the devil attempted and he tempted him. And you think about it, if the devil could bring temptation to the Lord Jesus Christ, when the devil should have known he could not succeed, how much more don't you think he will tempt us because he knows he might succeed if he tempts us. But this is telling us that temptation definitely will come. Look at the case of the Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. Reading from verse 1. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. You understand that? It was the devil that brought the temptation unto him. And his methods have not changed in verse 2. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, uh, command that this stone be made bread. I want you to think about it. Jesus Christ was full of the Holy Ghost. And then he was devoted unto the Lord. He went apart so you could consecrate his time, consecrate his life, and then consecrate the ministry he was going to begin unto the Lord. And suddenly there was a crisis. What was the crisis? The devil appeared. And then in that appearance, he brought temptation. You'll sometimes find out that in your life, that you are just going on, and you are loving the Lord, and you are serving the Lord, and you are making plans, you want to do this for the Lord, you want to do that for the Lord. Suddenly, without expecting it, suddenly, without perhaps even being prepared for it, a crisis of temptation will come. That's why you should understand, since it will come suddenly, Suddenly, unexpectedly, you ought to be prepared so that you will not fall into temptation. Let me show you some people. It came upon them like a crisis and they took the wrong decision because they were really not prepared. In Genesis chapter 13, Genesis chapter 13, reading from verse 8, And Abraham said unto Lot, let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my herdmen and, and thy herdmen, for we are brethren. It's not the whole land before thee. Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. I, if thou wilt take the left hand, then I will go to the right. And if thou, if thou depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. And Lot lifted up his eyes, and, behold, and he beheld all the plain of Jordan. And it was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest unto Zohar. Then Lot chose. Before we continue, you can see the situation there. He was living with Abraham. And he was a nephew to Abraham. Abraham was much older. As a result of his following Abraham, the Lord had blessed him exceedingly. Then there was a little problem. It wasn't really between Abraham and Lot, but between the herdsmen of Abraham and the herdsmen of Lot. And then uh, when Abraham knew about it, he said, there must be no strife. We are brethren. It must not be heard. There is any conflict between us. If we cannot solve the problem in any other way, why don't you look at the one you want to take? If you go to the right, I will go to the left. If you choose the left, I will choose the right. A temptation came. Immediately, that was a crisis. Be watching it in your life when there is a choice to make, when there is something to settle between you and your brother, between you and your sister. A temptation may come at that time to take a wrong decision. In verse 11, then Lord chose him all the plain of Jordan. 
and the Lord journeyed east and they separated themselves uh, the one from the other and then in verse 13 but the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly you know the rest of the story and you know that Lot eventually lost everything those earth men they were lost in Sodom and Gomorrah and the herds they cattle themselves they were lost in Sodom and Gomorrah even the wife became a pillar of salt it came as a crisis he couldn't handle it in Genesis chapter 25 Genesis 25, verse 29. And Jacob uh, sought pottage, and Esau came from the field, and he was faint. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint. Uh, therefore was his name called Edom. Uh, he was hungry. He had just come uh, from the field, and he was so tired, deadly tired, as if he felt there's nothing else to do. I must eat now. I cannot wait to go and prepare the food myself. And because of that need in his life, a crisis, a crisis of temptation. It's like Jacob had been waiting for such a crisis, an opportunity. Oh, he said, if you want to have the pottage, give me your birthright, sell me your birthright, verse 31. And Jacob said, Sell me this day thy birthright. And Esau said, Behold, I'm at the point to die. What profit shall this birthright do to me? He cried later. He wept so bitterly. But that crisis had made him to lose that birthright. He lost it forever. You see, when a need comes to your life, that need may come with a crisis. A crisis of temptation. That's why you should be watching and looking at the hand of the clock. Looking at the index. Because the situation in your life may just come with a crisis. And then the crisis may leave a temptation. If you do not overcome, the repercussion of the result may be following after you for years to come. In Numbers chapter 13. Numbers chapter 13. In verse 31, but the men that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are, they are stronger than we. Twelve spies had been sent to the land of Canaan. They looked at the land, and then they brought back an evil report. And they said, We be not able. I want you to realize how much power, much strength, much uh, miracle. It took the Lord to perform in Egypt for these people to come out. And now they came out, they were about to enter into the land of Canaan, a land flowing with milk and honey. And then the people came back and they brought a false report, a wrong report that led the people away from the land of Canaan. Be very careful when some people who have been Christians before you, when they give you some report, and when they tell you about this and about that, about the way of the Lord, about the way to lead to heaven. Well, this report they brought actually brought a crisis to the whole nation. Chapter 14 from verse 1. And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. You see, they began to cry, they began to weep, and then a temptation came. What was the temptation? Look at verse 4. And they said one to another, let us make us a captain and let us return into Egypt. You see that sometimes the need comes to your life. And with that need, there is a crisis. And with that crisis, now you begin to think, I think I will go back. I think I will not serve the Lord anymore. I think this is too much. I didn't know this is what I will meet on the way. The people that have gone before us, the people that are our seniors, elders, they have come back and they have told us that we cannot move forward, that the danger is too much. And then the temptation comes now to make a plan to return back to the world. I pray the Lord will keep us from that kind of spirit that will want to go back to Egypt in Jesus' name. In Second Chronicles chapter 24, Second Chronicles chapter 24, uh, from verse 2, And Joash, 
did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. All the days of Jehoiada the priest, actually Jehoiada the priest was instrumental uh, to this Joash becoming king and also being taught and doing well at the first time when he became king. But things changed in verse 15. But Jehoiada waxed old, was full of days, when he died, and hundred thirty years old was he when he died. And then in verse 17, see what happened now. Now, after the death of Jehoiada, came the princes of Judah, and made obeisance to the king. Then the king hearkened unto them, and they let the house of the Lord God of their fathers, and sat groves and idols, and wrath came upon Judah and Jerusalem, for their for their trespass. Do you see this? When the man of God, Jehoiada, was still alive, Joash was doing well. He was obeying the Lord. He was going according to the will and the word of the Lord. But now his counselor died. But now the leader died. Now the leader was no more there, and the princes came unto him. A crisis of temptation comes. Sometimes maybe you are living with your father, or you are living with your mother, or you are living with a, an elderly person who is a real Christian, devoted Christian, and is helping you to walk in the way of righteousness. When that fellow is not in town, when that person is no more there to counsel you, to supervise what you are doing, a crisis of temptation may come. That's the time you ought to be watchful so that you will not be careless in your life. In Matthew chapter 26. 26 from verse 58. This is a story of uh, Peter, one of the 12 disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. Actually, the Lord had warned him. And the Lord had said that Satan wanted to have him, that he may sift him like wheat. But then uh, Peter felt there was no harm. He was even ready to die for the Lord and die with the Lord. But in verse 58, Matthew 26, but Peter followed him afar off unto the high priest, uh, unto the high priest palace, and went in and sat with the servants to see the end. There is a lot in that single verse that you show us whenever you find yourself in that situation, that crisis may come anytime. Temptation may come anytime. Number one, in verse 58, Peter followed him afar off. The Lord had called Peter to follow him. But he wanted Peter to follow him intimately. Follow him wherever he went. Follow him into whichever place he, may, he might uh, have to go. But now Peter was still following, but was following afar off. When you find that your relationship with the Lord is following the Lord, but afar off. No more intimate, no more close, no more in real tight fellowship with the Lord. Be watchful that crisis or temptation may come just any time. And then it was unto the high priest palace. When you find yourself in the high places of the unbelievers, when you find yourself in the places of the people that do not love the Lord, that hate the Lord, be watchful, the crisis may come. And he went in and sat with the servants. When you find yourself sitting with them, staying with them, talking with them, joking with them, not thinking and not minding what may happen, be very careful. You may, you may discover that the crisis of temptation may come to see the end to see the end of one to see the end of what was happening to the lord jesus christ he was now walking by side the lord had told them the word before he should have been walking on the basis of what the lord had told them before but he was now watching to see the end what was the temptation look at verse 69 now peter sat without in the palace and a damsel came to him saying now also was with Jesus of Galilee, and he, but he denied before them all, saying, I know not what thou sayest. The crisis came, and he fell. You see the point uh, the Lord is teaching us today. The Lord is teaching us that temptation is a crisis. In fact, it can be a series of crises. And we have to pass through that temptation, but we must pass through victoriously before we can cross over to the heavenly city. Though 
you become truly sanctified and made holy by Christ's mighty grace, you must expect this temptation, this dog of hell, to continue to bark at you until you finally get to heaven, where there will be no more temptations. Do not suppose that temptations only come to the worldly minded. Uh, who have to, uh, to the worldly minded even the spiritually minded people in the holiest of states may still suffer the darkest temptations that's the reason we need to put on the whole armor of god every time so that whenever the devil comes with the crisis of temptation we will overcome and we will overcome in jesus name We've been talking about the crisis actually. What are the causes of the temptations? We're going back now to James chapter 1. James chapter 1, verse 14 and verse 15. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when the lust has conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished bring it forth death in verse 14 in particular every man is tempted when something happens when he's drawn away of his own lost and enticed to start with we need to understand that a vacant mind invites dangerous inmates as a deserted house tempts wandering uh, outcasts to enter and take up their abode in its desolate apartments. No doubt you've seen some, of, some abandoned houses around you, deserted uh, apartments around you. And you see those deserted houses, the outcasts will discover that there is nobody living there and they will take their boat there. That's telling us something that temptation, although temptation comes to all people at different times, yet idle people in particular have more temptations than industrious people. It has been said by people that some temptations come to the industrials, but all temptations come to the idol. Another person puts it this way, the idol man's heart is the devil's workshop, where he's always working mischief. And then it is said, he that labors has a temptation by one devil, but he that is idle has temptation by a thousand demons. That's the reason we ought to be very careful. We do not allow ourselves to be idle and to be led into temptation from which the idle fellow must be led into and it will be difficult to set himself free. In uh, Luke chapter 22, Luke chapter 22, verse 31, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. You see, the, ori the origin of temptation, the reason for temptation, is that uh, the devil knew that Simon had something in particular, something precious, something like a treasure, and that the Lord was going to use that man. And the devil didn't want that, therefore Satan was planning to bring him down. That's why the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, think about this, stop, and think about this important thing. Satan does not like it, that you want to make use of your gift, you want to make use of the treasure within you to honor the Lord, glorify the Lord, bring many souls into the kingdom. Satan has desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. And then the Lord said in verse 32, but I prayed for you. That your faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. But unfortunately, uh, Simon Peter was not taking note of what the Lord was saying. He was self-confident. I hope you are not self-confident tonight. I hope you are not saying the study does not concern me. I hope you are not saying I'm so strong, I'm so sanctified, I'm so devoted to God that no temptation can bother me. Don't say that. Look at verse 33. And he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee both into prison and to death. You know the story, you know what happened later. But you see, what are the things that actually bring temptation? The causes that we can trace and identify so we can be very careful in our lives. I'm going to very quickly run through eight things. Number one, 
inordinate affection or exaggerated desire for a perceived personal need may be used of the devil to bring temptation into our lives. When you have inordinate affection for something, you want that thing so much that uh, you are not thinking of the consequence of the paths you want to take, it may become a real serious temptation. In uh, Numbers chapter 11, Numbers chapter 11 from verse 4, and the mixed multitude that was among them fell and lost him. And the children of Israel also wept again and said, Who will give us flesh to eat? We remember the fish which we did eat in Egypt freely, and the cucumbers and the melons and the, and the leeks and the onions and the garlics. But our soul, now our soul, is dried away. There is nothing at all bes beside this manner before our eyes. That became a serious temptation. And he remembered Egypt. When your mind looks back and you begin to say, I remember when I was in the world. I remember when I used to go to those dancing halls. I remember when I was uh, spending my life the way I wanted and there was no check and there was no control. Be careful. As you are bringing those things back to mind, it can become a cause of temptation that your mind will be leaning that way, your affection will be leaning that way, and you may not know when you eventually fall. Number two, we find in Genesis chapter 30. Genesis chapter 30, when there is some controlled desire to have children by all means, or when there is some controlled desire to have healing by all means, and you're searching for that healing, and no matter where they say that healing is, you will go there. That becomes a source of irresistible temptation. Look at Genesis chapter 30 verse 1. And when uh, Rachel saw that she bare Jacob no children, Rachel uh, envied her sister and said unto Jacob, Give me children or else I die. When you want children that much, you want children seriously to the point you are saying, Except I have this sin, I will die. If that sin can become a serious source of temptation unto you. That then you go to places you shouldn't go. And you do things you shouldn't do. And you become partners with people you shouldn't become partners to. Number three is the love of money. When you join the mad rush in this world to acquire property, that thing becomes poisonous bait of temptation that has destroyed many people already. And if you are not careful, that thing to you can destroy you. In First Timothy chapter 6, verse 9. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 9. But they that will be rich, that is, they will be rich by all means. They will be rich urgently, quickly, suddenly. They want to be rich right now. They fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful laws which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and they have pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Be careful, therefore, when you find that every time you are thinking about money, morning, afternoon, and evening, instead of uh, looking at your Bible and saying, Lord, give me what you want to give me. I'm waiting for you. I will seek the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and I'm sure that all the other things you will add unto me. If the love of money takes over your heart, it's going to be a serious source of temptation. Number four, when there is the lust of the flesh, and there is a terrible impatience to have a life partner. I must get married now. No matter what happens, even if I have to compromise, no matter what well, I will have to do, I must get married now. I'm fed up with this single life. I cannot be a single lady anymore, a single man anymore. I want a woman. I want a man immediately. That thing can be very dangerous and very serious too. In Judges chapter 14, Judges chapter 14, Verse 3, Then his father and his mother said unto him, Is there never a woman among the daughters of thy brethren? 
or among uh, all my people that thou goest to take a wife of the uncircumcised Philistines? And Samson said unto his father, Get her for me, for she pleaseth me well. When you say no, it doesn't matter whether they are Muslim or Seleb, whether they are apostolic or whatever they are, whether they drink water or they burn incense, so that's not a problem now. I'm not talking about religion now. I want to get married immediately. Uh, I don't want anybody to disturb my life. That thing can become a serious a bait of temptation for you. Number five, when there is unchecked tendency, to please men and to be like the people of the world. That thing to you can become a serious temptation. That's what happened uh, to the children of Israel in First uh, Samuel chapter 8. First Samuel chapter 8, verse 5, And said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. We don't want to be peculiar. We don't want to be different. We want to be like all the other people do something for us. You see that tendency, unchecked tendency to please men or to want to be like the world, that thing can become a serious temptation. Number six, when there is pressure unreasonable influence of our intimate relations and friends when our relations are looking at our lives and they say they are pitying us and they say they are crying and they say that why are we still christians look at the way you are and look at your family and look at the things happening to you why are you still going to church why are you still believing in holiness and this kind of life when the pressure becomes much and that pressure influences on Neighbor, be very careful at that time. Temptation is coming. In Job chapter 2. Job chapter 2 verse 9. Then said the wife, that's the closest relation relative, unto him, Dost thou still retain that in integrity? Cause God and die. What a temptation. Uh, they have gone through a lot. And now the wife that should be supporting him, encouraging him, he said, uh, why, uh, she said, why are you still waiting? Why are you still wanting to serve the Lord? Uh, what else can happen to you? Cause God and die. Even if it means hell, damn the consequence, and do whatever you want to do. A great, great temptation. Be very careful. When you are going back now to your people, when you became born again many years ago, you were totally with the Lord and the people of the Lord. And your people were complaining at that time, we don't see you anymore. You have gone with Christ, you have gone with the church. But now you are going back to them. And their influence upon you now is becoming very, very great. Remember, that can become a source of temptation. Number seven, when discouragement has come. And you are yielding to that discouragement. Discouragement can be used as a tool in the hand of the devil to bring temptation unto you. In Jeremiah chapter 20. Jeremiah chapter 20. Reading from verse 9. Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. You see that discouragement had come. And the temptation was coming to Jeremiah, saying, of all your prophesying, of all the things you are telling the children of Israel, are they converted? Have they, been, have they come back to the Lord? Then discouragement came and he was saying, now, I will not make mention of him anymore. But his word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. And I was weary with forbearing and I, I could not stay. But then another thing that brings a temptation is hypocrisy. When we, are, when we become hypocritical, and we are just uh, paying lip service unto the Lord. And we are not genuine in our serving the Lord. That hypocrisy can become a source of great temptation. Look at Acts of the Apostles chapter 5. Acts chapter 5 verse 1. And, but a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession and came back part of the price. His wife also being privy to it, and brought a certain part, and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? 
to keep back part of the price of the land. Whilst it remained, was it not in thine own power? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thy heart? Uh, thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. Actually, hypocrisy was a problem of Ananias and Sapphira. And therefore, they brought themselves into a net. Temptation brings us into a net. That's the reason we ought to watch. That's the reason we ought to be careful. So that we do not allow all these various causes of temptation uh, to uh, run after us and take us. And then we become ensnared. In Job chapter 18. Job chapter 18, verses 7 and 8. The steps of his strength shall be straightened. And his own counsel shall cast him down. His own lust, his own decision, his own counsel, the advice he gives himself, and the wrong advice the people are giving unto him will cast him down. For he is cast into a net by his own feet. His own loss has drawn him away. His own loss has enticed him. He is cast into a net by his own feet. He waketh upon a snare. By the time he will wake up, by the time he will realize, it's in the snare already. It's in the net of the fisherman already. It's in the trap of the hunter already. It's in the hold of the devil already. I pray God will give us the grace to conquer. And we will conquer in Jesus' name. That leads us to point three. Conquering the tempter and conquering his temptations. In uh, James chapter 1 verse 16. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Make sure you do everything that needs to be done. So that you will not be led astray. So that you will not fall. What are the things we need to do so that we will not fall? Because we know that the Lord can keep us. And I pray He will keep every one of us. But we have our own responsibility. We have our own part to play. Look at the word of God and see the things we need to do. Matthew chapter 26 verse 40. Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Number one, before you can really overcome temptation, there must be a willingness in your spirit. Your spirit must be willing to walk with the Lord. There must be a willingness to follow the Lord, follow through, and follow to the very end. But even when you are willing, understand that your flesh is weak. Therefore, you will be watching and you will be praying. Not only that, Daniel chapter 1, Daniel chapter 1, verse 8. In Daniel chapter 1 verse 8, here we now find the consecration, the commitment, the decision, determination of a person that wants to stand firm and stand true and faithful unto the Lord. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. There should be a purpose in your heart. There should be a determination, decision in your heart that you have come to the Lord, you are going to remain with the Lord. That even though the people that came to the Lord with you at the same time with you, they may backslide, you will not backslide. You will take your stand. There is a purpose, decision in your heart that that crown of life, you are going to wear it. That street of gold in heaven, you are going to walk on it. You will be there in Jesus' name. In Psalm 119, Psalm 119, verse 37, Turn mine away mine eyes from beholding vanity. Quicken thou me in thy way. That should be your prayer in the morning before you go out. There's a lot of vanity in the world. Vanity of vanities. All this vanity. All you see under the sun. All you see on the street. There's a lot of vanity there. Therefore you ought to be praying, O oh Lord, turn away my eyes from beholding vanity. In Proverbs chapter 23 verse 17. Proverbs 23 Verse 17, let not thine heart envy sinners. That's how temptations come. You meet those sinners in your place of work. 
uh, you are earning the same salary or you are even earning more than them and you don't know how they are making it with the little salary they are earning they are riding vehicle and you say how are they doing it don't check up do not envy the sinners in your heart they do a lot of things you cannot do and uh, you see how they have their wedding you see how they make their burial you see how they dress up you see what uh, things they do do not look at them to envy them but that be thou in the fear of the lord all the day long they do not fear the lord in their own case the fear of the lord is not in their eyes therefore they do quite a lot of things but you cannot do that because you are a pilgrim going to heaven you are a citizen of the heavenly kingdom and you are not like them so do not envy them in first corinthians chapter 9 first corinthians chapter 9 verse 27 but i keep under my body and bring it into subjection lest by any means i my i uh, lest by any means when i preach to others i myself become a cast away you see that you as a child of god you'll be watching you know that the lord has deposited a great treasure into your life therefore you are watching over your life you are keeping your body under you are keeping your appetite under you are keeping your desires under under the control of the spirit of god under the control of the watch of god so that after you have preached to other people other people have been looking at you as a challenging example after that you will not become a cast away in matthew chapter 4 you see the method of the devil what uh, the method he used for the lord jesus christ and he's still doing that today matthew chapter 4 reading from verse 8 again the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and says unto him all these things will i give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me now the devil may not come to you directly but he went to the lord jesus christ directly he may send other people and he may say friend i just came to see you and it's because i love you i've been looking at your situation and i see that you need this and you need this and you need this it's uh, doing the work of the devil he is showing you the kingdoms of the world and he's showing you the glory of them and he's saying well i want to introduce something to you i hope you don't mind I know that you deeper like people, you are too strict. I know that you deeper like people, you don't see anything uh, beyond, uh, you know, your church. But anyway, I will do my duty if you will follow me. And we go to such and such a place. All these things you have been looking for, you have been praying for. In fact, uh, in a very simple way, you are going to have everything. You know, that's the method of the devil. That's what he was telling the Lord Jesus Christ. I will give you everything if you just fall down and worship me. And then he will tell you of course when you get there uh, you may feel that it's so different from deeper life uh, you know don't judge in your mind although they may do this and do that just leave all that alone you know what you are coming for and then everything will become yours but thank god jesus overcame and we're going to overcome in verse 10 then says uh, jesus unto him get thee hence satan for it is written thou shalt worship the lord thy god and him only shalt thou serve i pray that will not yield to the devil in jesus name of course we need god's grace to overcome and we can we can have all the grace we need from a mighty and merciful father to overcome temptation and to conquer the tempter there are, there are a number of things to do number one be much in prayer be much in prayer watch and pray that you do not fall into temptation number two spend longer time in holy adoration don't miss your quiet time you wake up in the morning have fellowship with the lord read the word of the lord read the scriptures more earnestly and constantly let the scriptures be a, compa a, a constant companion in your life number four watch your life more carefully and live nearer unto the lord and be very very sensitive during the day anything that is coming anything that is happening and you know 
know that this sin will affect your relationship with the Lord before the sin even gets to you. Make sure that you cut it off. Number five, you will take the best examples as your pattern. Uh, you will look at the people that are living the victorious life, especially in the Bible. You find people that overcame so that you can pattern your life after their good examples. Number six, destroy the little foxes. Lest they destroy you and make a shipwreck of your faith. And now I need to tell you this before we close, that in contending with a certain temptations, the only way of victory is to run, is to flee. He who will always overcome temptations must know how to run, must learn how to run away from them. You'll make a covenant even with your eyes that you will not behold and gaze upon the object of temptation. You will not allow any tie of friendship any thought of material gain to tie you down in a place and to make you turn away from your wise resolve uh, to flee from that sin before we pray look at uh, second timothy chapter 2 second timothy chapter 2 in verse 22 second timothy chapter 2 verse 22 flee also youthful lust but follow righteousness faith charity peace when them that call on the lord out of a pure heart here we are told flee also youthful loss you remember joseph in potiphar's house and the wife of a potiphar's master his boss wanted him and invited him to come and commit sin but the man said no he refused quite a lot of times but when there was nobody in the house only the two of them uh, the wife of this uh, boss laid hold on him and said you must commit sin and this wise joseph because the Lord wanted to do something great in his life. And he knew it. He knew the dream the Lord had given to him. And he knew that if he sinned, that sin may destroy the dream. He left his garment in the hand of that woman and then fled away. Although the woman told the lie against him, but the Lord promoted him eventually, you pass the test. Overcome the temptation. The Lord will promote you in Jesus' name. In the early, say, in the in the first century, many many years ago now, there was a man called Augustine. Actually, many people refer to him as Saint Augustine. Before he became born again, I think at the age of 33, he had been living with a prostitute before that conversion. After his conversion, one day he was going on the road, and that prostitute called on him from behind, but he will not answer. He kept on walking away because he didn't want to go into that temptation anymore. When the, then the woman ran after him and shouted his name, Augustine, Augustine, it is I. Do you not know me anymore? To which Augustine replied, Yes, I know it is you, but it is no longer I. And then he became totally free from that sin permanently. It's no longer you. It's now Christ living within you. And if you will not behave like you were doing before, and you say, I'll be victorious, you'll be victorious in Jesus' name. Rise up and claim your victory. Is the devil tempting you? Is the flesh tempting you? Is the world tempting you? Are you facing a crisis or temptation right now? Have the grace of God in your life. The Lord says, my grace is sufficient for you. It will uphold you. And you will be able to stand. Call upon the Lord. Call upon the Lord. Although there may be many temptations and many things drawing, wanting to draw you. If you will keep on looking unto the Lord. And you flee away from those things. And you turn your eyes away from those things. And you bring your life under His control. Your body under His control. Your desire under His control. You will have the victory. Please make sure you pray before you go. In prayer there is power, there is strength that will make you to overcome.